Hello everyone, we are doing module 3 on cache coherence. This is lecture number 11 and in this lecture we are going to see a detailed example of the cache coherence misses and along with uh, some classifications in uh, related to update versus invalidation based protocols. So, we will start with the example of cache coherence. We have seen uh, the different categories of misses and now we will do an example okay, to understand the process properly. In this uh, you can see a table on the slide and we are going to fill it slowly. Here uh, we are going to list the time sequence that is the sequence in which the events are happening and then what happens in every processor. We have three processors P1, P2 and P3 and in the last column we are going to fill the misclassification name. We are only going to discuss related to one block. So, we are going to take one block B and this block has got four words W1 to W4. So, there are four words sitting in this cache block and uh, other words, words 5 to 8 will also sit in the same location so that we can uh, generate the conflict scenario. Okay. Then I am also going to use some no new notation which says that what uh, the processor ID along with the timestamp. Okay. So, uh, looking here if you see I am going to use one cache block having four words and another cache block again having four words and both of these map to the same location in the cache. So, they map to the same location uh, meaning they will evict each other. Okay, and then this notation PIJ, it says memory reference is issued by processor I at row J. So, row J is the timestamp. So, this is the timestamp and that I is the processor ID. So, if I say P1, 3, what does this mean? Processor P1 and time 3, time 3 which is row 3. So, it is talking of this cell that is what happened in this cell. Okay. So, we will start with the example. Here I have uh, filled all the events in the first three columns and we are going to fill the misclassification. So, uh, I would say that uh, you try pause the video intermittently, try to solve it and then restart the video. So, we will look at the first row time 1. Here processor P1 and P3 read W1, W2. Okay, and initially there is uh, cache is empty. So, this is the first axis and it is the first axis and what happens here P1 and P3 will incur a cache miss. They will incur a cache miss. What type of miss is this among the 12 names which we looked at? I do not know right now because we will only categorize it when this particular block gets evicted from P1 and P2. Okay, so when I remove this block, I will give some name to this cache miss. So, I will not name, I will simply say it missed, but reason is not written. Row number 2 here, P3 writes W2. So, what will you do here? This write is going to invalidate this one. It is an invalidation based protocol, so it will remove that. And when P1's block gets removed, I can now give a name to its miss. So, I will say P11 means processor P1 time 1. What happened in process of P1 time 1 that is what happened in this particular cell? What was the reason for this cache miss? I can tell this reason after it gets invalidated. So, we can say it was a pure miss and cold miss because W1 uh, P1 brought and it used and nobody else changed W1 after that. So, I will say this was a pure cold miss. Okay, so, if I hope you understood the notation that whenever the block gets evicted from a processor, we are going to do the misclassification. So, P11 pure cold which I wrote here, I wrote it in row number 2 because in row 2, P3 evicted P1's block. And same with P3, what happened in P3, can P3 directly write? No, it cannot. In any coherence protocol, P3 has to first get permission to write and hence it has to uh, send a bus update or a bus inval and so on. So, P3 and timestamp 2, I will say it incurred something equivalent to an upgrade miss. P3 had to upgrade its block for writing. Okay. Third row, P2 wants to write. So, I will say simply P2 will incur a cache miss. We cannot categorize it right now, we categorize it later. Third row done, fourth row. 
fourth row this will it hit or miss it hits right because word 1 2 3 4 are in the same block so because of this there is a cache hit what about this read w7 by p3 so here uh, p3 is it going to hit or miss it is going to miss because w7 is in another block the word 7 is in the second block and not the first block so p3 will miss I can't categorize this miss right now but because of this miss which block gets replaced the first block okay so if I say b1 and b2 okay so let me say b1 has the words w1 to w4 and b2 has the words w5 to w8 okay so if I use this notation here this is block b2 and this block b2 is going to evict or replace block b1 okay so they are different blocks and because I evict block b1 from p3 I can give a name to it p3 and timestamp 1 because the block was brought in the first timestamp this I will call as a cold miss when the block gets evicted we give a name to that okay row number 5 is it a hit or a miss it is a miss because uh, w5 is in another block and it has block b1 but b2 uh, has w5 so p1 misses nothing else happens in this row or this timestamp moving on row number 6 will this hit or a miss it is w6 block b2 so i will say p2 also incurs a cache miss and now here we need to categorize the other misses that is uh, when I read this I am going to evict the block uh, b1 so let me write this first 2 comma 3 p2 had loaded block b1 in timestamp 3 okay right so this has led to eviction this has evicted that block and we can now categorize the reason that is why did we remove this block meaning why what was the reason for miss at row number 3 so what was the reason for miss it was definitely a cold miss but was it a true or false sharing miss I am talking of this block this particular block was uh, there brought for the first time so I am saying it is a cold miss but if you see it is accessing the word w2 which was modified by p3 okay so even if p2 would not have incurred the miss it would have resulted into an invalidation by p3 so it is using w2 which was changed by p3 hence I am going to call it a true sharing miss true sharing but with her additional clause of cold so we've done this now if you uh, see let's see revisit row 5 because uh, row 5 also evicts this one okay so if i categorize p 1 1 p1 row 1 what happened in p1 row 1 we had a cache miss it was definitely a cold miss but was it a sharing miss what did we access we access w1 and w1 was not changed by anybody in the system hence we will call this a pure cold miss or just a cold miss now row number 7 row 7 write w6 is it a hit or a miss row 7 uh, I would say p2 has the block already but that block is also shared by uh, p3 right w6 is block b2 block b2 is present in p3 as well as p2 is also trying to access it okay so row number 7 there is a write for uh, word 6 when p2 writes word 6 it hits in p2 but i would say p2 was reading it and now it wants to write so we can let us quickly say that it is an upgrade miss for uh, p2 
right. So, let us do the easy case for P2 and in row number 7 that current row I can say this was an upgrade event for P2. But because of this we are going to evict this block and we are going to evict this block or I would say invalidate because we are modifying it. The block gets invalidated from P1 and P3 hence I need to categorize them P1 and P3. So, P1 had loaded this block in row number 5 and P3 had loaded the block B2 in row number 4 ok. So, what are the reasons for this? So, P15, P1 in row 5 we loaded the block and what is the category of that miss? It is a cold miss because it is accessed for the first time and W5 was not changed by anybody. So, I can simply say this is a cold miss and P34, P34 is this one and we are going to what is the reason for this block? We are reading W7, did anybody else change W7? Nobody changed right. So, I can also call this a cold miss and also we can put the word pure because uh, it had to happen and it is not related to coherence ok. So, with this uh, this was the explanation but a neater final answer is on the next slide and we will have uh, here one p. So, these are 7 timestamps we will do few more. I hope we will have to recollect uh, or refer to the previous slide because we need to remember what happened previously. So, looking at uh, row 8 ok because it is a continuous uh, example row 8 we have a read w5 do does p1 have w5 if I go back here uh, because of this this was evicted hence p1 does not have w5 so I will say at row 8 p1 misses there is a miss in p1 row number 9 is it a hit yes it is a hit so I will say p1 there is a hit and what about P3? P3 does a load that is a read ok. So, this is a read W2. If it reads W2 does it have W2? I will go back to the previous slide and you can check. P3 recently had 7 but it also got removed 2 is also not there ok. So, P3 also miss. I will request you pause the video intermittently to cross check and then uh, try to solve it yourself ok. So, if you do it uh, meticulously slowly uh, you will be able to do this correctly. So, we are at row 9 done now row 10 row 10 read w2 hit or a miss it is a miss because uh, block W6 is an, uh, another block and what about this read W1 let us go to the previous slide and see P2. P2 presently has W6 that is another block one is not there ok. So, both of them miss I will say P1 miss P2 again miss row 10. Now, because we miss in row 10 in P1 we are going to evict we are going to delete this block. Now, what is the reason for bringing this block in row number 8? So, I will say P1, 8. P1 brought the block in row number 8, which I removed just now. What was the reason or what is the label for that miss? The label is we used 5 and 6, right? We removed uh, just now we are removing W5, W6, but were W5 and W6 changed? in the meanwhile. So, if I go back to the previous slide you can see yes the W6 was changed by P2. So, this W6 which I read was changed by P2. So, P2 gave me the best answer or the most recent answer and hence I will say it was a sharing type of a miss and it is a true sharing miss. So, I can say this is a pure true sharing miss because uh, I will just say W6 for your reference that, that I access W6 and that is why sharing miss. 
what about p26 i'll write it here p2 comma 6 p2 has to when it reads this go back to the previous slide you know that uh, it is going to evict this block this block will be evicted and uh, what's the reason for bringing this block that the reason i'm going to write in the next slide p26 p26 what is the reason it was a pure cold miss there was because it uh, changed the data and did not use anybody else's data see p2 did the writing to w6 it did a read on w6 nobody had changed w6 apart from p2 hence it is a pure miss for a cold miss for p2 and not a uh, sharing miss row 11 is it a hit or a miss for p1 it is a miss because w5 is in the other block so it is going to remove the block of row 10 okay so when i remove a block p1 10 what should I write here? P1 had brought the block in row 10. I am removing it right now. So, this block only stayed for one time stamp. What type of a miss shall I call it? Is it a sharing miss? So, for that you have to see the word W2 and was W2 changed by anybody in the system? On this slide definitely not but if I go to the previous slide here you will see at timestamp 2 p3 had changed w2 okay and p3 changed w2 and p1 reads the w2 in timestamp 10 hence i will say this is a true sharing miss so in row number 11 p110 i will say true sharing miss with reference to word w2 so far okay now row number 12 write w2 happens is it a hit or a miss in p3 row 12 the block is there yes it's there but i will say this is an upgrade because uh, p3 in timestamp 12 is an upgrade and when uh, p3 accesses w2 what does it do this axis is going to evict this one it's going to invalidate the w1 in p2 and when i remove that i need to make an entry what happens to p2 for the block it had brought in timestamp 10 okay so it access w1 so it uh, and nobody changed w1 so it is not of uh, true or false sharing and it simply happened because of capacity and not a cold miss because I have access w1 earlier in timestamp 3 then I had to remove it because I read w6 and I had to reload it again here right so this is happening because of capacity this is not a cold miss cold miss for uh, w1 has already occurred here right so this is already a cold miss but the second access to w1 is a capacity miss Okay, row number 13 we are seeing P3 uh, incurs a cash miss. It is going to evict this block. So, I am going to write here P3 has a miss. It evicts the block of P2, this particular block. So, I need to give a reason P2. But when was this block in row number 12 loaded? It was loaded in row number 9. Right. So, P3 row p3 row 9 because the block uh, with word w2 was loaded in timestamp 9 oh, and uh, we changed w2 we read w2 but did anybody change w2 uh, on this slide nobody changed previous slide uh, only p3 changed w2 nobody else changed so we are only changing nobody is changing that so i can say that this is a capacity miss it is not a uh, coherence miss it's a capacity related uh, miss so we finished this case of uh, row number 13 now let us uh, again have a quick look at p1 when we do read of w7 here there this block is also present in p1 so do we evict this block no we do not only thing will that this block if it was in the modified state it will become a shared state 
okay so there will be uh, information transfer between p1 and p3 for this case so it will move to the shared state okay moving to row number 14 row number 14 is read w2 again it's a miss so i will say p3 is a cache miss because this block has to be removed now so p3 block w7 in row number 13 p313 what is it now pause the video and give me the answer processor 3 row number 13 that block what category miss should you call it okay so is it a w we access w7 did anybody change w7 no so it is a false sharing okay but that block uh, if we had not removed it because of capacity if you see here we use another color see because of this relationship the block would have been invalidated okay even if we would have not removed it but it would have been invalidated in some sequence and hence I will say it would have been invalidated okay so it would have been an invalidate related miss presently it is also a capacity miss because of this too right so it happens uh, because of the capacity we had to remove and reload it and it is a false sharing because we are reading w7 and p1 has changed w5 okay so it's an inval capacity false sharing miss okay that is uh, row 14 okay we'll do row number 15 now the last uh, case read w1 p1 hit or miss miss um, and it removes the block from row number 11 so p1 row 11 what happened there 11 we had brought the word w5 that is the second block and we brought that and now we have to remove it so nobody else wants this block but we are removing it and uh, when we brought this block at 11 we had to remove this block so between these two if you see row 10 and 11 this was a capacity issue and not a coherence issue and hence i will call this as a capacity miss p1 and 11 is a capacity miss right so uh, this is the solution and a neater solution is uh, given here for your reference here I have also written when I say true sharing miss in say row number 11 which is the word which we had accessed and so on okay on this slide although it is a very tiny font written here uh, but I have written the full example but definitely the pieces of this are in the previous two three slides okay so for your reference uh, in one chart the whole example is written right so that was the uh, misclassification example now we are going to look at methods of reducing coherence misses well the basic idea or the best solution for reducing any type of miss is increasing the cache block right so we are going to increase the cache block but they come with some drawbacks but why do we have large cache blocks because we have a increasing gap between the processor performance and the memory bandwidth right so memory access time is slow processors are fast so when we go to the slow memory we want to bring lots of data with us so when we bring lots of data it will help us in temporal spatial locality and improve the performance so we want large cache blocks okay and uh, these large cache blocks create problems for multiprocessors because of this sharing problem which we are discussing right now the larger the cache block more the false sharing misses which happen so the gap between the processor and the memory is helping us or telling us that i should bring large amount of data and hence have larger cache blocks so the trend of larger cache blocks has been coming because I have multiple high density processors then I can also have multi-level caches I can do prefetching of blocks so all these uh, high-end processors 
several levels of uh, cache hierarchy and also prefetching data blocks. So prefetching means go and bring the data from the memory before it is required. So when I go to bring something beforehand, I would rather bring more stuff than less stuff, right? So prefetching would be benefited if my cache blocks are large. Okay, so these are the reasons why I have a large cache block, but uh, these have problems in multiprocessor systems because they are going to increase the false sharing misses. False sharing miss increases, so you have more invalidations and unnecessary uh, bus traffic occurs. Okay, so how do I counter the effect of these large cache blocks? Okay, they are affecting my false sharing misses. So we can say that. Uh, Okay, so false sharing misses increase because of a large cache block. How do I solve this? So you will say that uh, we'll only concentrate on the false sharing aspect. That all the blocks which have some words which are not used by everybody, let them not sit in the same block. Okay, so what I'll do? I'll organize the data such that only the words which are used by everybody will sit in one big block, and those sparingly used words by others will not sit in this block. So even if the block size is big, my false sharing will be less. Okay, so we have to organize the data structures. Then uh, we'll say that uh, one solution for this is, can I have the coherence maintained at a smaller granularity? Right now, coherence is at the granularity of the cache block. So if even if I'm accessing one word, I end up invalidating the block across all processes. So if I say that coherence is only word level, so the word which I'm changing, only that word across all the processes will get invalidated, whereas not the whole block. So the block can stay, but the words will get invalidated. So that's one solution. And uh, if you do this, then the updates or the changes uh, to be done to the memory. The traffic related to the memory or the interconnect traffic also reduces because we are only going to change the modified words and not the whole block will go to and fro between modules. Okay, And if you have smaller cache blocks, you will say it is going to take more time to load them. But we can say yes, you can always use prefetched data to cater to these small blocks. Okay, so. Countering the effects of the cache block, I need to organize my data structure such that uh, I have more properly or more shared data sitting in the same block, right? So this is handled mainly in the software. So we can say somehow the programmer manages to pack shared items into closely packed locations and less shared items in different locations. So I'm going to fetch at the granularity of uh, uh, the cache block, but coherence in small sub blocks. So how is this? So look here, suppose this is the green is one block and the pink is another block. So this whole thing is one cache block, but instead of invalidating or so instead of removing this full block at a time or whatever, I'm going to control it at the level of the words or sub block. So this is one sub block. So when uh, I change this particular word, we are only going to invalidate this word across the system and not the others. Okay, so certain blocks could be valid and certain blocks could be invalid in this. Uh, why invalid? Although the data is there, but I will say this is being modified by some other processor. This sub block is being changed by another processor and this sub block is changed by this current processor. So, in within the block, we'll make partitions and say that this partition I'm modifying, that partition somebody else modifies and so on, okay? So this is also reducing the amount of data written because only this much data will be sent on the bus by us because we only change that particular word, okay? And uh, small caches, uh, cache blocks are okay because we can always prefetch uh, the data beyond the block size. So this is how I can counter the side effects of having a larger block. One is by organizing the data and packing more accessed uh, data items into a large block, one option. And second is another one where I uh, maintain coherence at a smaller granularity of the sub block level. Third solution is use adjustable block size that is depending on the type of shared data items you adjust the size, but this is a complex solution. And the fourth option is 
uh, this problem occurs because we end up invalidating cache blocks, right? So, uh, if I have a big cache block and we start writing it, we have to invalidate it across all processors. Later, those processors in current base, they will again fetch this block. So, there is lot of traffic happening. So, uh, we can say that let us consolidate uh, all these writes together and then eventually send the update or invalidations. That is only when I change a single word, do not do anything. When few words change in your block, only then you inform the system that invalidate your block and that I have fresh data with me. But what is happening here, I am accumulating lot of writes and then sending it across the system. This might affect the memory consistency models which we will discuss later. Okay, so, delaying the propagation of invalidations is okay, but it affects the memory consistency models. So, what is the fifth solution? Fifth solution is use a hybrid of update and uh, invalidation or just use update instead of invalidation. Because uh, the problem comes because I am invalidating, do not invalidate, just keep on sending the updates. Okay. So, with respect to the fourth solution, this is a example to delay the propagating of invalidates. Here, if I change this, I have to send invalidation, but do not send it right now, wait for a while. When all three have finished, then you uh, invalid, once you have finished all three, invalidate or send the updates on the bus. So, we can send all of them together, but this solution affects the consistency models, right. So, uh, to counter the effect of large cache block, we said that we can use update uh, protocol instead of invalidation or some variations of this. So, let us see or understand when I use update protocol and when I should use an invalidation based protocol. So, uh, this actually depends on the type of sharing or the workload patterns which we are running. If there is lot of sharing between the data items, then uh, we need to decide whether updates would be good or invalidations would be good. Okay. So, when is update good? It is good when the updates which I am sending onto the bus, the receiving processors keep using those updates. That is all the updates are consumed and locally utilized. In that case, update is good. But invalidation is good in the opposite case. That is, uh, this processor changes data and nobody else wants this data right now, right? In future, it might need, but right now, it does not need it immediately. So, even if I invalidate those, those blocks from those processors, it is not going to hamper the performance or increase the traffic, okay? And invalidations are also uh, good in the cases when I have a single threaded application, it is running on this processor. After a while, operating system reschedules this process on another processor. So, it was running on processor P1, now it runs on P2. So, when this process moves to P2 and runs starts running there, it is going to incur cache misses in that processor, whereas its stale data is still in this processor in a valid state. So, when it runs on the other processor, it is going to keep on sending updates and invalidations to its stale data in the previous processor, even if it is not using it. So, that is unnecessary traffic and in this scenario, if I use invalidation based protocol, then the stale cached copies in the previous processor will get removed, right. So, update versus invalidation depends on the sharing patterns. I use update when the updated data is likely to be used by the new processor, right? So, they, it keeps using it, so good for us and I will keep sending updates and invalidation based protocols are good when the processors are never going to use those data items. So, it is going to reduce your useless traffic happening. I explained that there is a process P, uh, running on P1. OS reschedules it to another processor, but the stale data remains on this and new accesses keep happening here, right? So, the process itself has moved to another processor and its stale copies are in the previous processor's cache and these uh, will keep on getting updated in the case of update based protocols. But if I invalidate it, then these copies will get removed. Okay, so, unnecessarily lying copies across the system, useless copies of data will get removed in case of invalidation based protocol. Can I use a hybrid of update and invalidation? Okay, so, this is a good idea, but uh, who will do this? We have either hardware for update or we have either hardware for invalidation. 
So, we can say that can we move the burden to the programmer and say that the programmer manages the locality or uh, loads the variables in such a way that more shared variables that is one type of access variables sit in one page. That is uh, at page granularity I will say that this particular page this is not a cache block memory pages. So, page 1, page 2, this page uses update protocol, this page uses invalidation based protocol. Okay, so, can I do this? So, we leave the burden to the programmer that the programmer says or manages the variable such that a particular type of variable which suits update protocol sits in one page and the types of shared variables which suit invalidation based protocol sit in another page. Right? So, we have two different pages with uh, uh, categorized uh, variables kept in them correctly, but this puts a burden on the programmer to do this and to implement this uh, we can make note at the TLB level. So, TLB says that this particular page uses so and so protocol. Okay? So, that could be done, but can we do it in hardware? Okay? So, in hardware if we want to do one solution is you can say one type of a cache uses invalidation say L1 cache uses invalidation, L2 cache uses update or we can change dynamically that is I am running a protocol of update for example and I keep on sending updates on the system. Now, these updates get consumed by other processors who have the cache blocked, but if the, those processors are not using those cache blocks, then if somehow there is a mechanism when they will say that hey you are sending me updates, but I do not need them anymore, let me delete the block myself because you are sending me unnecessary information, I will delete this so that you need not send that information to me. Okay? So, if we can implement such an idea, then at runtime we can switch between update and invalidation. So, we will uh, see how could that be done. Okay. So, to manage it in hardware, we could either say that I have two caches working at different uh, methods. So, L1 works on update, L2 could be based on update and L1 based on invalidations or the second one is we start with an update based protocol and then at runtime change to invalidation or vice versa. So, next slide has the uh, example. So, when I talk update versus invalidate, I am going to refer to the dragon protocol. Here, I will have a block B and I will set a counter K to it. Okay. So, whenever an update comes to this protocol, right, is uh, through the dragon protocol, when a bus update is coming, I am going to decrement the counter because I am going to keep track that how many times am I getting updated without getting used. Okay. But in case B gets used in this processor, if I use it, then when I use the block, the updates were useful for me. right? So, whatever data come was useful for me because I am using that data. So, I will reset the counter. So, I will do K, suppose your K was equal to 4 and uh, we did not access the block and update came we go to 2, 3 and suddenly we start accessing. So, yes uh, the updates are important for me. So, I will reset the counter to K. Okay. But if the updates are not important for me, I will keep on decrementing the counter. So, every time an update comes we are going to do counter minus minus and if K becomes 0, what will we conclude? We will conclude that all the updates coming to us were not important, we are not using them. So, we might as well delete the block from the system. Okay. So, we will locally invalidate this particular block. And when we invalidate this block, what would happen? The future bus updates uh, will go and the shared wired or signal will say that uh, this block is shared by nobody. And so, we will switch to modified state instead of update. So, we will not send bus updates anymore. Right? So, here if the counter reaches uh, to 0, the block gets deleted and the sender that is the owner of the data who was sending us the bus updates will now switch its state in the dragon protocol to the M state and in the M state no bus transactions happen. So, what have we done? We have reduced the bus transactions essentially not directly in validations, but the bus updates have been removed because the block itself invalidated itself. Okay, so, the block locally invalidated without the protocol actually changing to invalidation based protocol. 
and as I discussed earlier, if we access the block, then you reset the counter to k because I am accessing the block, the updates are important to me and hence I should not remove the block. And when uh, we have the block, it will resume the bus update. So, bus updates are important, reset the counter and keep receiving the bus updates. Okay. So, the overall idea is if the bus updates are important, keep on receiving them. If they are not important, invalidate the block in the local processor. Okay. So, uh, with this we have understood the variety of scenarios that is when update is good, when invalidation is good, can we switch between the two, what are the different methods and so on. Um, and in this lecture we have also seen the misclassification. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.